we go into his office sometimes in in London because you know they say familiarity breeds contempt but we go in sometimes to Lou's office and he'd have somebody in there and his secretary would say hang on a second you know um, Lou's Lou's busy but he, he was a health food fanatic quite early and he had a kitchen behind his secretary's office and at the side of his yeah. office yeah. so he just walked straight through she'd say hey you can't go in there you know oh don't worry Lou won't mind Lou's alright so we'd go in and sort of raid his refrigerator he got his food you know and you could hear that there was somebody out there while he was in having a meeting in the side office and he'd shout hey who's that out there I'd say, oh it's us Lou hey what are you doing you're eating all my food you <laughs> wealth bastards you're in my refrigerator oh shut up Lou you know you get out of my refrigerator eat all my food oh blah 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 and then he'd say hey you guys come in here there's somebody I want you to meet, you know, so we'd walk in through the kitchen door and he'd be sitting there with somebody like Teddy Savalis or Clint Eastwood or somebody like that and then he'd get great pleasure by, you know, looking at that, our jaws would drop, you know, as we walk in, you know, and, uh, but we met and he introduced us to an incredible number of people, the most important of whom was Quincy Jones and uh, we did a... Uh, we did. Uh, we played the music for uh, for Quincy's uh, compositions for a film that he was writing the music for, and that was a big experience. And I learned a hell of a lot from that, mm. doing that job. And of course, we'd go up to Quincy's apartment in London to rehearse the parts he'd written for us before we'd go in the studio. And you'd go into Quincy's house, you know. I mean, well, I went in there one day and. We went up and he's sitting there and there's Billy Eckstein and Ray Brown. You know, suddenly, through Lou introducing us to Quincy, you're in the kind of presence of these kind of absolute giants of music, you know. You know it's, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Oh, that was Lou, you know. Lou put us onto all that. I mean, being American, of course, unlike the English, his is, is English counterparts at that time in the record industry, he actually used the artists that were signed to him. If they had a talent for doing something, for arranging or composing or producing, Lou actually put a lot of work our way, you know. He linked Richie Francis, our bass player, up with uh, Aphrodite's Child, which was Demis Roussos and Van Gerlis. And uh, um, Richie ended up working with people like, uh, what's, his, what's his name that wrote the um, sh uh, um, sh uh, sh uh, Richie ended up working with some really big people. He wrote lyrics for some th things with Quincy. He wrote stuff with Van Gelis, Aphrodite's Child, had huge hits. Um, Wasn't he originally supposed to be the bass player in Bad Company, or is that a rumor? Richie, he was... I think he did have an offer to join that band, but he, he, he stayed, uh, we all had various offers, but we stayed together somehow. Um, I, Lou, I, I, did, I did string arrangements for, um, for, for, for different projects that Lou was producing. I mean, a, a, an English record company would never do that. So it was an eye-opener, you know, being with Lou.